ever find yourself binging one of those crime shows? You know, the ones, laptop about to slide off the couch and you're thinking, I could totally nail that forensic science life. Yeah, we've all been there. Well, today's Deep Dyes is for you. We're ditching those TV tropes and diving into what it really takes to make it in the world of, you guessed it, forensic science. And trust me when I say the reality is way more interesting than any TV drama. We're going straight to the source for this one, an Alliant International University article called What Can I Do with a Forensic Science Degree? Five Career Paths to Separate Fact from Fiction. We're talking real-world impact of forensic science on the justice system. No Hollywood glam here. Okay, let's be real for a sec. Those crime shows are basically their own genre, right? But how much of what we see on screen actually holds up? Let's just say, don't expect those instant DNA results they love on TV. Yeah, those always wrap up right after the commercial break. Right. Real forensic science is all about meticulous analysis, not instant gratification. Analyzing evidence, DNA, fingerprints, ballistics, it all takes time. So we're not talking a quick scan and done. Nope. We're talking weeks, sometimes even months, of careful, methodical work. And it's not just about the time, it's the precision, the objectivity. Every detail, even the tiniest one, could be the key to solving a case. Which makes you think about those morally ambiguous characters we often see on screen. Right, because real lives are on the line here. Forensic scientists have a huge responsibility to stay impartial. Makes sense. It's not about crafting a good story. Exactly. Ethical conduct is a must in this field. Forensic science is about uncovering the truth, however complex, however uncomfortable it might be. You know, it's wild to think about this field. For all its cutting-edge tech actually goes back centuries, right? Oh, absolutely. Even Roman and Greek societies were using early forms of forensic investigation. Wow, talk about a historical deep dive. The pursuit of justice, understanding evidence, it's all woven into human history. Fascinating. So let's get into those career paths, the nitty-gritty. Our article lays out five main options, each with its own draw. First up, and this is probably what most people think of when they hear for forensics, yeah. law enforcement, and crime scene investigation. The blood stains, the fingerprint dustings, all that. It's classic crime scene imagery. Exactly. But within this past, there's a ton of variety. Oh, really? I'd but imagine it's pretty specific. You could specialize in blood stain pattern analysis. Like analyzing the patterns. Yep. And the trajectory, the velocity of the blood splatters. It helps reconstruct what happened. So it's like morbid physics. You could say that. Or maybe you're into the whole fire investigation thing. Arson investigators are like detectives of the flames, mm -hmm. sifting through debris, analyzing those burn patterns. Trying to figure out if it was an accident or... Or deliberate, exactly. And then there's ballistics, for those intrigued by firearms, analyzing bullet trajectories, identifying the type of firearm. So you could link a bullet to a specific weapon. That's incredible. Right. It's crucial in solving cases involving shootings especially when you have multiple firearms involved. Like piecing together a puzzle, but the pieces are bullets and casings. Speaking of puzzles, remember that Craigslist killer case? How could I forget? That case really highlighted how important digital forensics is becoming in solving crimes these days. Absolutely. That case was a game changer, showing how digital evidence, emails, online activity can be just as crucial as physical evidence. It's not all car chases and chasing down criminals, though, is it? Definitely not. Crime scene investigation requires meticulous attention to detail, patience, and staying objective, even in really intense situations. I bet. It's all about carefully documenting every single piece of evidence, no matter how small, because even the smallest detail could be the key to the whole thing. Sounds like a job for someone with a strong stomach and even stronger attention to detail. <laughs> you could say that. So let's say chasing down criminals isn't really your thing. What about the calmer environment of a forensic lab? Ah, uh, now that's where the real magic happens for a lot of forensic professionals. Meticulous analysis, cutting edge technology. The really precise stuff. It's a different kind of pressure, but just as crucial in getting justice. Makes you appreciate those lab professionals even more, doesn't it? It really does. It's like a whole other world, all those high tech microscopes and scientific gadgets. You're not wrong. Our article talks about a bunch of lab based roles, each with its own thing. Yeah. Like forensic toxicology, for example. Toxicology, so we're talking poisons and things like that. That's yeah. right. These are the pros who analyze blood, tissue, all those biological samples to figure out if drugs, poisons, toxins played a role in a crime or even a death. So instead of chasing bad guys, they're tracking down these microscopic clues inside the human body. Exactly. They're looking for anything that could have caused a death 
or impaired judgment or even been used to, you know, cover up a crime. It's really detail-oriented work. Hmm. It requires a deep understanding of chemistry, pharmacology. And the human body, of course. Of course. And then there's the classic image of fingerprint analysis, dusting for prints at a crime scene. It was always seemed kind of magical, you know? Like the, those unique patterns could link someone to a crime. The actual analysis happens back at the lab. Right. And it's more science than magic. Fingerprint specialists or latent print examiners are trained to analyze and compare fingerprints. I mean, with amazing accuracy, they've got all these different techniques, dusting for prints, using chemical developers, even high-tech imaging to capture and analyze latent fingerprints. Latent fingerprints. The ones you can't even see. Wow. It always amazes me how they can pull a single fingerprint from a crime scene and potentially connect it to someone like miles away. Those databases they use in the shows, those are real, right? Oh, yeah. And they've changed the game completely for law enforcement. Databases like AFIS, the Automated Fingerprint Identification System, let investigators search through millions of fingerprints in minutes. No way. It's incredible how much technology has changed forensic science. And speaking of which, what about DNA analysis? Oh, DNA analysis has been huge. Right. Forensic biologists can get DNA from the smallest samples now. A single drop of blood, a stray hair. It's unbelievable. And they use it to identify people, trace lineage, even clear someone's name if they were wrongly accused. Right. Techniques like PCR, polymerase chain reaction, let scientists take even the tiniest amount of DNA and amplify it. So even degraded samples, damaged samples, they can be analyzed now. It's like having a genetic time machine, uncovering secrets hidden in our cells. And with technology always evolving, who knows what's next? But it's not all microscopes and lab coats, is it? You're right. Not every forensic career is about analyzing physical evidence. Some of them dive deep into the human mind. Looking at what drives criminal behavior, those patterns, that's where forensic psychology comes in. Ah, uh, the mind reading stuff. I've always been fascinated by that whole criminal profiling thing, trying to like create a psychological sketch of a killer based on what they did at the crime scene. Right, profiling is a real thing in forensic psychology, but it's way more nuanced than what you see on TV. It's not about some mystic insight into a criminal mind. It's about behavioral analysis, crime scene evidence, statistics, all to create a profile that might narrow down suspects or even predict what they'll do next. So it's about understanding the why behind the who. Yeah, exactly. And forensic psychologists, they often work with law enforcement, providing expert testimony in court, assessing if a defendant's even fit to stand trial. Oh. They even provide counseling sometimes to victims and offenders. So there's a whole rehabilitative side to it, too. We don't often see that. Speaking of hidden worlds, let's talk about the digital world. Cybercrime is exploding, and it seems like we're leaving a digital trail everywhere we go these days. It's true. And that's where digital forensics comes in. It's one of the fastest growing areas in forensic science. This is where it gets really interesting, at least for me. Digital forensics and cybersecurity. Sounds like something out of a movie. Right. Think about it. Every email you send, website you visit, online purchase you make, it all leaves a digital footprint. And digital forensic experts are trained to follow those trails. Wow. Piecing together evidence from computers, smartphones, even the darkest corners of the internet. It really is mind blowing how much info they can pull from a single hard drive these days. It's like the wild west out there in cyberspace. It really is. We need some serious digital sheriffs to wrangle it all in. That's a great way to put it. And as tech keeps growing, we're gonna need more and more of those digital forensic experts. Absolutely. They're the ones on the front lines of fighting cybercrime taking down hackers, recovering all that stolen data. Exactly. You know that Craigslist killer case we talked about that really opened my eyes to how crucial digital forensics can be. It was a pivotal case for sure. To think someone sitting at a computer could be just as important to solving a crime as someone, you know, combing through a physical crime scene. Absolutely. And that case really shows how collaborative forensic science is as a whole. Yeah, you've got all these experts working together. You need a multidisciplinary team pulling expertise from all these different fields to really get justice. That makes sense. Speaking of different areas of expertise, we haven't touched on one path yet, the one that shapes the future of forensic science. Ah, uh, you're talking about education and research. Right. It might not have that same, you know, immediate, we're solving a crime feeling. Not right, right. But it's absolutely crucial for the field to move forward. Because it's easy to get caught up in those individual cases. 
But someone needs to be pushing the boundaries, right? That... Developing new techniques, making sure that forensic science keeps up with the world because it's always changing. Precisely. Imagine being a professor, inspiring the next generation of forensic scientists. Wow. Or doing groundbreaking research that changes how we solve crimes. The possibilities are endless. From what I've read, the research side of things is blowing up right now. Oh, yeah. It's incredibly dynamic. Mm -hmm. There's fascinating work being done with like artificial intelligence to analyze crime patterns, mm -hmm. even virtual reality to create these immersive crime scenes for investigators. No way. It's wild. It's a really exciting time to be involved in forensic science research. With how fast technology is advancing, we're just scratching the surface of what's possible. So we've covered these five amazing career paths within forensic science, each with its own unique appeal and its own challenges. Right. But no matter what path speaks to you, there are some core skills you need if you want to be a forensic scientist. For sure. A strong foundation in science and tech is a must. Of course. We're talking biology, chemistry, maybe even some computer science. Depends on what area you're interested in. Right. But it's more than just being good at science, isn't it? It absolutely is. Our article makes a big point of highlighting soft skills, too. Which are? Critical thinking, problem solving, that meticulous attention to detail. Those are all key in this field. Even a tiny mistake can have huge consequences. Because one tiny oversight could mean a wrongful conviction. Exactly. Or letting the guilty walk free. And we can't forget communication and being a team player. Right. Forensic experts are often working with law enforcement presenting evidence in court, collaborating with other experts. You have to be able to get your point across clearly and in a way that convinces people. So no lone wolves in this line of work. Not if you want to be good at it. Nope. Collaboration is key. It's a good reminder that even the smartest scientist needs to be able to communicate well to make a real difference. Well, there you have it. We've only scratched the surface of this massive, always evolving field, but hopefully this deep dive has given you a glimpse behind the curtain. The real life roles, the skills you'd need, the impact a career in forensic science can have. It's a field packed with dedicated people, people who play a vital role in our justice system. And as tech keeps moving forward, who knows what the future holds for the world of forensic science? It's an amazing time to be a part of it, that's for sure. So true. So if you're into science, tech, the law, and you want a career that's both mentally engaging and really makes a difference, forensic science might just be your thing. Just remember, it's not for the faint of heart. Nope. It takes dedication, precision, and a real passion for uncovering the truth. Well said. That wraps up our deep dive into the world of forensic science. Until next time, keep those brains curious.